So hello, everyone. Welcome to Writer Girls Tips in 10 Minutes. I'm super excited to have with us today two of our very own here at Writer Girl, two of our content strategists, Nikki and Stella. Um, Nikki and Stella will each introduce themselves, but what I'd like for them to do is, um, you know, they're both content strategists, but they work on very different projects here at Writer Girl. Content strategy is really not kind of an off-the-shelf thing, right? We all do something different when we dive into these types of projects. So as you introduce yourself, if you can share specifically kind of like what your day looks like today, some of the projects that you're working on and some of the things that you're doing. So Nikki, if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself and talk to us about your day today. Sure. I'm Nikki Breen and each day is different with content strategy. So today I'm working on a large client and we're going through and redesigning 12,000 URLs they have on their website and redoing the navigation and the SEO and all of that kind of stuff. So I'm in a little bubble right now today. <laughs> 12,000 URLs. So tell us um, if you can describe sort of the vision for this project. Like what is the um, the work behind what's driving the strategy and kind of what the end result is that they're going for here with that. Because that is a, is a large project. So what is it all laddering up to? Yeah, so the user experience is very poor on it. People are having trouble finding what they want and then they're just abandoning it and then they're calling and having questions. So trying to figure out how to make it more user-friendly and finding what people want right away and not having a mix right now. There's stuff of healthcare providers mixed with patients. So kind of parsing those out. So you're getting specifically what you are looking for. So give us an example of some of the things that you've been doing today. So are you so, like researching competitive analysis, auditing? Give us some of the nitty gritty of what you've been, what you've been doing. So today it's going through a specific batch that's based on lead prevention, lead poisoning, all everything to do with lead and okay. figuring out what it is that our state regulation, some weird symptoms, could this be lead poisoning? All these different angles and healthcare providers looking at, okay, children up to this age, what should we have for any kind of standard lead testing? All these different angles. And there are 50 URLs right now in this batch. And I'm going through and looking at what can we put together for pages? What do we need to split apart? What do we need to organize more for like patients or consumers versus some healthcare stuff because it's all mixed together. So a reader will land on a page and it's kind of going through and it's a very high reading levels right now. We're talking about grade 16 plus. So oh, you wow. typically want to pull it down to like eighth grade, even sixth grade reading levels for this particular project. So going through and making sure that when someone lands on a page, can they understand what is being said? And is it what they are looking for? Are they gonna get some healthcare provider information when it's a consumer looking for some information? So just doing a lot of navigation and SEO, making sure the right keywords are on the page. A lot of these aren't ranking properly because you do have that mix of healthcare provider and all these different things going on. So kind of a, a little bit more nuanced than typical. Stella, I think is probably gonna have some more examples of a typical content strategy project. Yeah, I like, but that's good to hear just the example of one specific area of a 12,000 URL project, kind of what how you're taking a deep dive around lead. So you, you are our internal SME right here at Writer Girl on all things lead. <laughs> so how about you, Stella? What are you working on these days? Yeah, so I started my day as usual with a big cup of coffee mm -hmm. and um, spent probably about an hour working on finalizing some pages of content that um, I did the initial content strategy for, and then our writers um, took up. I'm making sure that um, that strategy that we created has been implemented in, in that content before it goes live on the client's website. Um, after that, I had a quick client check-in to discuss some of the strategic objectives of a microsite that we're working on with them. And... Um, Right now, I'm working on putting the finishing touches on some recommendations for a client um, on a specific section of their website. They asked us to do like an, a mini SEO and content strategy audit on um, this section of their site. We're doing a gap analysis. We're auditing the existing content. We're looking at keyword research to see you know, how we can optimize their existing pages with the language that their consumers are using and entering into Google, um, making cross-linking recommendations um, 
taking a look at the accessibility of the current content and how we can optimize that as well. So working on that um, report and also an executive summary for the client um, to kind of talk through our findings and our recommendations and they can then share that with their C-suite. Wonderful. That sounds like really good projects. It sounds like I always hear whenever you guys talk about your work, it seems to me like there's sort of a, um, a technical side to strategy and then sort of this human behavior side to strategy, you know, mm -hmm. and balancing those two things. Like you guys both talked about, you know, all of the analytics and the taxonomy type stuff and the research and the data and all this. And then there's this sort of, you were talking about, you know, needs to be at a lower reading level because of what's the user experience and how are people consuming? Are they getting what they need? And so you guys have that really great brain where it's the left and right, right? You guys are using the both sides of the brain to, to bring that to these projects. Um, so thank you for sharing um, some of the things you guys are working on. Um, so when you think about like your typical day and, and what you're doing, are there any things that kind of like bubble up to the top that you could recommend? So healthcare marketers, our audience, our clients, our friends, the people we work with, um, are all overwhelmed. You know, we're all doing more with less and they're taking on more and more. Um, the roles are just expanding. And so um, it's challenging to be all things and in, in all of the work that's being asked of them. But if, if there was something you could suggest or recommend to make them just a titch more strategic in their daily work or, or smarter in their daily work or more efficient or whatever, is there anything you would recommend to them that um, you would suggest to be more strategic? Nikki, if you I, want to go ahead. I would say make sure that you are thinking about your user intent for if it's a blog post you're creating or a video or what have you, what is the goal you want out of this piece? What do you want the user to take away from it? So that's something that can easily get lost. You think of, oh, the marketing campaign, we need this and this and this, but make sure that each piece is very specific and make sure that each CTA is very clear for what you want that piece to offer. Um, you want to make sure that you're focusing not on, well, here's for healthcare providers if somebody wants to make a referral, and here's some information in, say, the same video if a patient wants some information. Keep those separate. So provider information and consumer information is different. And then as Stella mentioned, doing things like some keyword research. So if, say, you want to make a cancer page about just basic cancer services you offer, make sure that you're using the right terminology for that so it lands in the right serves. Mm -hmm. Stella, what do you have to add to that? Yeah, that's such a great point. That really is the foundation of all good content strategy, right? It's knowing your audience and their needs and making sure that even if you have your primary audience, you're also reaching those secondary audiences that are just as important and they're able to easily find the information that's relevant to them. Um, my tip is, you know, I know we're all increasingly busy and it's hard to stay on top of best practices and digital um, strategy is changing by the minute, healthcare is changing by the minute. How do we stay on top of everything and, and how do we stay on top of what industry leaders and benchmark organizations are doing and best practices when it comes to user experience and content strategy and health literacy and, and all of that. So I would recommend subscribing to Google Alerts. I have four set up. I get an email once a week on all things, the best of what the internet has created mm -hmm. <laughs> around uh, content strategy, healthcare marketing, healthcare literacy, you can set them up for whatever topics are of most interest to you. I would recommend setting them up for your own organization as well to monitor, you know, where on the internet people are talking about your, your health system or health department or your organization. And then um, if you subscribe to two newsletters, <laughs> I would definitely recommend Becker's Mm -hmm. and um, Norman Nielsen Group. So especially Norman Nielsen Group, they are gonna be sending you the latest best practices on um, user experience, user testing. They are just a wealth of super fascinating, actionable information mm -hmm. on how to improve user experience for your digital properties. Yeah, those are really good ideas. I think um, you both talked so much about, you know, user intent and the user experience and being consumer centric. So even to like any thoughts or ideas on 
how do we stay on top of that? Like, you know, so maybe those newsletters are good examples of ways to do that. But I think healthcare in general, that's been um, more of a challenge to really be, you know, on top of what are the consumer needs. Um, so if you have any additional, we'll be sure to include maybe links or suggestions around how to have a discipline around that very thing. Like, how can we continue to be thinking about what's good for the user and what's good for um, the consumer? Um, so any, I guess we'll just end with one more question. Do you guys have any um, tools that you use that you love and you say, I cannot live without this tool. I have to use this in my everyday um, job. Anything you would recommend or suggest to our listeners? So everybody has Google Analytics for their website. Yeah. So that make sure you're using it, you're digging into it because that's gonna have just a wealth of data that you can mine from it. And you're even gonna see, are you having some really high bounce rates on some of your own pages? And you're gonna be able to find where you are leaking patients that way. Another one is some kind of SEO tool. So things like SEMrush or Moz Pro, something where you can look at what keywords are doing as far as trends and ranking. You can put in what competitors are ranking for in terms of keywords, what they have for traffic. So just kind of keeping it a pulse on what others are doing so you remain competitive. So those are probably my big ones that I use yeah, each day. Yeah, those are good. How about you, Stella? Yeah, those, those are great recommendations. Um, Something, a tool that I love to use, it's free, um, is Hemingway app. And you can take a page of content, plug it in there, and it's just going to give you really great actionable um, ways to improve your content readability, make that grade, grade reading level accessible, um, address instances of passive voice, um, just overall enhance your content. It's a great tool as you're auditing your content and can be really revealing. We also use Grammarly at Writer Girl. This is such a great tool for understanding the voice and tone of your content and um, making sure it's as readable as possible. Another tool I like to use quite often is um, a browser plugin. It's the WAVE Wave Accessibility Checker. So you put this into your browser, you go to your web page, you click the, um, the tool, and then it tells you where are those accessibility issues where someone who uses an assistive device like a screen reader to access your website, where um, are their accessibility problems that's going to affect their experience, right? So accessibility is really important mm -hmm. for healthcare organizations. It's the law. <laughs> so mm -hmm. making sure that your website offers the same high quality experience to those users that do have barriers. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's the right thing to do and it's good from a business perspective as well. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you both so much for taking time out of your busy days to to join me for this and thank you so much for all the great work you do for our clients we just love hearing from them and how much they appreciate you and we just certainly appreciate you so much so just one other thing you know if you're going to be subscribing to newsletters you gotta subscribe to writer girls <laughs> newsletter as well it's also a wealth of information and great tips too yeah thank you for that stella yeah. <laughs> good, good way to end it all right. Thanks, guys. Take care. Thank you. Bye.